Hello everybody, thanks for clicking onto this video where we're going to show you the difference between Mark Mesh and all the other imitation wax meshes out there such as East Coast and Throne. An interesting fact about the thumbnail attached to this video is that that's a picture of a professional lacrosse game taken in 2008, only one month after we released Mark Mesh. All three players in that video are using a Mark Mesh, all of them strung by Blue Collar Lacrosse, Mark or Joel Laval. One of those players went on to win the scoring title, as did a player in professional field lacrosse in 2009 using a Mark Mesh strung by Blue Collar Lacrosse. You know, I could go on all day about what has happened since that time, but I'm going to let the ticker at the bottom take care of that. In this video, I'm going to break down for you, give you some simple experiments that you can do that show you the difference between Mark Mesh and all other meshes. Mark Mesh has been the number one mesh used by pros over the last decade, and there's a reason why. We hope you enjoy this video, and if you uh, are looking for Mark Mesh, We've recently put it up on Amazon.com. You can not only find our whole selection of Mark Mesh as you see behind me, but we also have professionally strung stick heads strung by Mark and Joel Laval. There are many factors that make Mark Mesh the number one mesh in lacrosse, such as its performance, first and foremost, its break-in, its lifespan, and its weatherproof. But the most major factor that Mark Mesh has over all other mesh is its ability for pocket memory. The ability to break in like a soft mesh, however, retain memory like a hard mesh when throwing, giving you that accuracy and consistency that you build up your muscle memory to. To show you this, what I have in my hand is a piece of marked mesh, 15 millimeter, which I took fresh out of a package and I've broken it in for 10 minutes. To demonstrate what pocket memory is, I'm gonna stretch out the mesh, and as you can see, those diamonds return back to their regular diamond shape. That's going to be the shape that you break your pocket into and after you catch the ball the diamonds will return back to it. Here I have a piece of East Coast Mesh. East Coast Mesh I've taken out of the package as well however I've stretched this one out for one hour. Doing the same thing, applying the same pressure, what ends up happening is you get diamond freeze. It, as you can see the mesh even starts to roll up behind it and what's happening there is that the diamonds every time you catch the ball are going to adjust to where you caught the ball inside of that pocket and when you go to throw the ball your pocket won't be as consistent. Here we have a piece of uh, thrown mesh same thing just going to stretch it out and there you go that's diamond freeze. So what are the three things that Mark Mesh has these other imitation wax meshes don't have that give it its pocket memory, its break-in, lifespan, weather durability, well that can be broken down like this. Number one is Mark Laval's mesh butter. These are not waxes that you're going to find at a candle shop. These waxes were a decade in the making for Mark to come up with his formula in his garage as to what worked best inside of a lacrosse mesh. Number two is Mark Laval's patent for injecting and embedding the mesh butter into the center of the netting. Only a residue amount sits on the surface, but the, net, the uh, wax itself is embedded into the center of the netting. And with the patent, you know that claim is true, and you know that Mark Laval is its true inventor. And third is that we use nylon. Let me ask you how many videos you have watched where people talk about a lacrosse mesh and they never tell you the material it's made from. There's a reason for that because over 95% of lacrosse mesh is not made from nylon. At Blue Collar, we have our special blend of nylon that we have chosen for its ability to absorb the impact while catching the ball and recoil back into shape, which gives you that pocket memory, especially when combined with mesh butter. I don't want you to take my word for it. The best thing you can do is Google a show called Outrageous Acts of Science on the Discovery Channel. On there, there's an episode called When Nature Calls. In that episode, a person jumps off the side of a mountain, tethered to it only by a 60-yard rope. At the bottom of his fall, the narrator asks, why was this person not catastrophically injured doing this? And two physicists explain to you what we've been trying to say since 2008. 
is that nylon has the ability to absorb the impact, stretch out, and unlike other materials, it then has the ability to recoil. It has the memory to go back to the way that it was. And when you combine that with mush butter, well, that's where the magic happens. On this sheet are some flakes of mesh butter. Our patent covers the fact that we embed the mesh butter into the center of the nylon. However, there is a small fraction amount left on the surface that flakes off when you stretch it out to string it. This is an example of those pieces. As you can see, they are already smaller than a grain of sand, unlike the imitation wax meshes, which use a much more liquidy, gummier wax mark mesh uses top quality, high performance wax, waxes that perform the best inside of your lacrosse netting. These tiny granular pieces for the wax that remains embedded in the nylon break up even smaller. And when those smaller pieces combine with nylon's ability to absorb impact and recoil, that is what gives you our signature pocket memory and the blue collar pocket where it breaks in soft but still throws like a heart. Now not only do we go the extra distance to use nylon, we also used our enhanced texture weave, wild weave, to give you additional friction inside of the pocket. Your friction ridge layers of skin are what we call fingerprints. Those allow you to throw a baseball, giving you that extra grip and feel that allow you to have more control over the ball. Well, the same goes with our lacrosse mesh. Since 2008, Mark Mesh has been made with Wild Weave where we take the nylon fibers, we twist them, and knit them into the netting. If you want to see a great example as to the difference this makes, again, I suggest going to Amazon.com and take a look at their zoom feature, which allows you to zoom in on our mesh. We keep all of our mesh outside of the package so that you can take full advantage of this. For those of you that don't want to go to Amazon and look, we're going to put up a picture right now which shows you the Mark Mesh versus an East Coast Mesh. Keeping in mind, the vast majority of lacrosse mesh out there are knit the same way an East Coast Mesh is. Mark Mesh goes that extra distance and while those enhanced texture friction ridges don't play a bigger role as the mesh butter and the nylon and the fact that we have it embedded in there, they do go to show you we didn't cut any corners and we will take advantage of anything that we can take advantage of to give you the best mesh. Check out this photo. Now, a quick experiment to demonstrate to you how much softer Mark Mesh breaks in. The reason that's important is because with a softer mesh, you're able to catch and carry the ball a lot easier. Here I have the Mark Mesh broken in for five minutes, I'm sorry, 10 minutes. Here I have the East Coast Mesh broken in for one hour when I roll them over. As you can see, the Mark Mesh almost gets to the bottom there. The East Coast Mesh barely getting started. Where that has major effects for you, as I mentioned, was trying to catch the ball. Not so much when you're catching a ball that's thrown perfectly to you in your wheel well, but when you have to reach for a ball, it slaps the mesh and pops out. Another place where it will affect you is when you're running with the ball. With a Mark Mesh, the nylon and mesh butter break in to hug the ball as you're running with it. With these other imitation wax meshes, what you end up with is what we call the bingo ball effect, where the ball bounces around inside of the pocket as you're trying to run, which makes it easier for defenders to knock out and makes it harder for you to get into position so you can throw it. Let's move on to weather durability. Quick question, what's gonna be more weatherproof? A netting coated with wax or a netting with the wax embedded? The answer is simple. The netting with the wax embedded into it because the water will have nowhere to go. You know, when there are many examples I can give you of games, professional lacrosse games and collegiate lacrosse games that were played on ESPN where weather was a factor and the team with Mark Mesh came out on top. But the best example is one where in 2008, Blue Call Lacrosse, when we first got started, traveled down to M&T Stadium for one of the big stadium classics, 25,000 people at it. And what we did was bring a throwing booth so that these people could see our product firsthand and get those questions answered for themselves. 
while people were at the throwing booth, we noticed a group of kids were circled up around a stick and trying to pour water on it. Well, we were so impressed with these young scientists, we told them, if you guys can get a bucket of water from one of these vendors, we'll put our stick heads into that bucket of water and you can see how weatherproof Mark Mesh is. Sure enough, 15 minutes later, these kids came back with the bucket of water and, true to our word, we put all of our sticks in there. And the rest is history. The next day, the lacrosse forums had plenty of people talking that were at the game and couldn't believe it that when they went to the booth, pulled our stick out of water, it was still throwing true. Let's move on to lifespan. And again, I'll ask the question, what's going to have a longer lifespan? A mesh with a wax coating or a mesh with the wax embedded into it as Mark Mesh has the patent for? I think the answer is obvious, the mesh with the wax embedded into it. Mark Mesh will last up to six times longer than these other wax meshes. And we don't want to mislead you, we don't want you to think it's invincible, but the best example I'll give is for a uh, NCAA player, you would want to put a mark mesh into your stick for summer ball, go into fall ball ready to impress, and that same mesh is going to last you for your season, including the playoffs. Reload with another mark mesh in the summer, and you're all good. Uh, going down in age, obviously it's going to last a little bit longer the further down you go, but right there is a good gauge. While mark mesh isn't a piece of steel, it is the longest lasting wax mesh available. Another huge factor is diamond size. When we first came out with the 20 and 15 mm, a lot of people asked us, does the mm stand for millimeters or mark mesh? Truth is, it's a play on words. It does stand for mark mesh, and as for millimeters, it does play on that as well, given it's a measurement, but other than that, it has no actual ties to the measurement of millimeters. Truly, what we wanted it to stand for was the mark mesh, and on the lacrosse forums and places like that, quite often people would display a mark mesh just referring to it as a 15 or 20 mm. Now, where diamond size is important for you is as the diamond size increases, as you can see in this chart, so too does the hold. Now, the buyer be warned that as you go higher in diamond size, it does become a little more skillful to string. However, quite often people are able to master it on their second time around, and rarely does a person who learns how to string a 20 mm go back to the smaller size diamond. So how do Mark Mesh diamonds differ from East Coast and Throne? Well, our 15 mm has larger diamonds than the East Coast and Throne 15 mm. Their diamonds would be in the ballpark of a 12 or 13. Now, why they call their 15 mm, I'm not too sure, but unfortunately, what this does is it ruins a system where stringers could much more easily exchange stringing patterns if they could all agree on a diamond size scale. Well that's going to wrap it up for this video. However, we would like your suggestions for more videos. You know, when you're dealing with Blue Collar Cross, we want you to know when you come to one of our social medias, what you're going to hear is the truth and what you're going to hear is good advice. Nobody has strung more sticks for professional lacrosse players than Mark and Joel Laval. The advice that they'll be able to give you is second to none because they've been there. Nobody has had the experience of blue collar lacrosse. So please, send us in your questions, send us in examples for videos that you would like to see, and we're going to start shooting them. You can send that to info at bclax.com, and don't forget to follow us on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed.